Hey, hey, hey guys, this is John Dean coming at you from another episode of Nomad Happy Hour. Today we're here with Shane and Emily. Shane and Emily travel in this Bluebird bus and their handle name is Arbor Season Express. The Instagram for our bus specifically is Arbor Season Express and the one for our band is Arbor Season, so. Right on. So we got two, which I'm kind of going back and forth on, like, should we have just done one? Yeah. I don't know, I keep going back and forth on that. Damn. Whatever. <laughs> the, uh, the thoughts on, of being in bus life, it's like, all right, how many different handles should we have? Mm -hmm. How yeah. many different, how Here's many different social medias bridge. do we have? You know, it's yeah. like, I it was just talking about starting like a new YouTube. I was like, no, I don't need another one. I got too <laughs> another many one to on run. This time. Yeah, right? Yeah. I know I've got an Instagram for him. We each have our personal ones, the band one, the bus one. I'm like, well, now I have to start one for her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're gonna get a cat. We need to get one for our cat too. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Oh yeah, because you guys are getting an, a cat here soon. Yeah, we're gonna we get are. a kitten named Noah. Yeah, so it's already named yes. Sawyer. Yeah, tell the story. It's cute. It's he just like I've asked him to name stuff before, but he's like never named any of his stuffed animals. He'll just be like, oh yeah, it's a bear, and he's holding this kitten, one of Jess's kittens from the Painted Buffalo, and we were that's the one we wanted. We were like, what do you want to call it? And he goes, yeah. It's Noah. And we were just, we just all looked at each other. We were like, I don't know where he got that from. Like, I don't know. <laughs> are you guys adopting a cat from shelter or where are you guys? No, I, no, our friend Jessica, her cat had kittens. Yeah. Oh, cool. so. Jess from the Painted Buffalo. So she's got four kittens. And I was like, I've been trying to hold off for all this time. And then, I don't know, I just... I couldn't say no, they're so cute. <laughs> well, we all n know when the right time is to do, you know, things like recently I've been thinking like, what's the next venture in mm -hmm. my life? And it's like, you know, there's, there's new surprises that will be coming up in the future, let's just say. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fun and interesting and we'll see where, where we can take it to. You have me intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> Are you pregnant? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I'd be rich if I became pregnant. Definitely. You'd be pretty famous. Oh, yeah. You'd be even more famous than you are now. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, I'm not famous. <laughs> so. Not yet. Right. Hopefully you guys can help me become famous. You guys been well, on the tell. road a little bit longer than I have. Oh, really? How long have you guys been on? Like six years? It's been about five years. Five. Yeah, I've been out here for three years now. Three years? Okay, mm -hmm. so we've only been on the road a little bit longer. So, so yeah. where did you guys start from? Where did your guys' journey of schooly life? Well, Sorry. my mom and dad, they, they fell in love and it stopped. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> no. Yeah, All right, Florida. usually we try to hold this to an hour podcast. <laughs> so. All right, well, we'll give the quick story. Yeah, so I'm from Canada and Emily's from Missouri. Uh-oh. And this one is from both of them. This yeah. one's, yes. <laughs> oh, she's crying in her sleep. She does that sometimes. Yeah. Emily may have to leave us for a couple of days. <laughs> Sorry, All right, guys. it just means Sawyer. Bye, Emily. Sorry, guys. All good. All right, now I'll tell the real story. Oh, All right. No. Just kidding. You need to go back and censor everything. Right? But yeah, so we met in Florida. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Go to the Christmas tree. So we um, we met in Florida, and we started playing music together. We got our start at Disney. So we played at Disney for four years. Um, and then we started playing at the college market, and then we were traveling full time. And I was like, "Why are we paying for rent at a place you know we're never at?" So I was like, "We need to get an RV." So we bought an RV, traveled in that for four years, and then got the school bus during quarantine, converted it, and here we are. So a year now in the school bus officially. So. So I think I've heard through the grapevine though this isn't your first school bus. Oh man. This is our third school bus. It is our third. Yeah. School but bus. is this the first one you lived in? Yes. yes. It's the first one that. Color. Yeah. I think, yeah, so I we had another school bus. Um, the first one that we got, we, we only paid 250 bucks for it. So we pretty much paid for the battery. And then- It like sat on our friend's property for what, like a whole year. And we were just too busy doing gigs in Florida to even like think about converting it. It just was not practical at the time. And then Did we, it turn out to be like one of those band buses where you just throw a mattress in there and travel around to gigs? We didn't use it. It literally <laughs> it just sat there. And just then we ended there. up giving it to a friend who drove it up to Georgia Dude, through keep a going. lot of trials. Oh, he got it to Georgia. No, and going. then we bought like a short one 
And that was the one that his mom ended up traveling around with for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she mentioned that you happened to just give your mom a bus to go travel her life dream. Because we had this idea that we were going to get a short bus. We were pregnant with him, like super pregnant. And we were like, let's get a short bus. And we'll just like travel in it and it'll be like so fun. And then, I mean, it came down to it and we were like, no. We can't go into something smaller than the RV. We need something bigger. And so that was why we ended up just deciding to scrap the project, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did we take So when you guys decided to come into the nomad world, I think I, I think I know where this answer is going to go already. But what did friends, family say to you guys when you guys first were like, hey, we're going to go <laughs> live in a bus? Well, or a vehicle or that's you know. really funny yeah. because it was him and i was trying to talk him out of it and i was like no way we were dating at the time and i was like i'm not gonna live in an rv you crazy person yeah people thought i was nuts <laughs> including me <laughs> and, it, and it's so funny because now they all love following the journey and, mm -hmm. and like being apart but yeah all it, of our parents have been so supportive of it totally on board my parents think it's the coolest thing ever like no but it even, yeah it even took your parents a little bit it's at the beginning the with the rv yeah, yeah. with the rv it's and then the when the school bus came into play it was like yeah everyone they, they already saw that we were we know. were serious about being on the road we knew how to do it kind of thing yep well i think for you shane it was probably a little bit easier since your family already lives on the road hey. you know, your mom and, you know linda and tony the ones that i actually just did an interview with uh, two episodes ago. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Hey, I, well, haven't, I haven't listened to that one yet. Wow! Oh, no, we're terrible children. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't even, I, I didn't even know that even happened. <laughs> so, oh really? Yeah. So, oh surprise! So, <laughs> so, so let's check that out. Yeah. Oh, so so we, I think us living in the RV. So, my mom was like, oh. so speaking about living in parking lots, why? You know, what got you guys to get out here? Was it basically the band situation? You know, being able to go around gig to gig or? That was what, like, was the first motivation for him getting the RV, was, like, we were starting to travel around and playing at universities all over the country, and we were traveling so much that it was, like, pointless for us to be paying the $800 per person for rent for our mm -hmm. apartments that we yeah. didn't even want to be at because we wanted to travel more. So we were like, this just makes so much more sense. Yeah. Which is great because we did end up actually being on the road so much more than being in one place that... It was it was the right time for it to happen when you guys first um decided to do this were you guys like in a house or apartment or we each had our own apartment okay. because we were um we weren't married yet and so we were in the same apartment complex but he had his and i had mine and we were each paying like 800 dollars a month for our rent which is yep. and then i bought the rv and then emily actually got rid of her apartment and moved into mine yeah and then while she was living in mine, I was living in the RV. And then when we got married, she moved into the RV at that point. <laughs> it was like musical houses. <laughs> it sounds like you kind of follow in, in the footsteps. You know, you move into his, he moves out to Definitely. the RV, you move into the RV. She wouldn't stop following me. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't get rid of her. I couldn't get rid of her. She just kept coming. He's like the entrepreneur, like idea person. Like that is his strong suit. He's always coming up with like ideas. And what if we do this? What if we do that? And I'm kind of like more of the pessimist that's like, okay, well, here's all of the logical side of that. Are you sure we can still do it? Which I think is healthy, okay, to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But then I end up going and doing it anyways and having a great time. So, well, I mean, it's good to kind of live outside that box, you know? Definitely. But also have those limits. You know, it's because kind of like living in the box but out of oh, the box. In a really big box, we'll put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of music do you guys play? Indie folk. Yeah. Yeah. When we yep. do like bar gigs and stuff like that, we do everything. Like we do lots of covers across the board, like Coldplay, Johnny Cash, John Mayer, whatever. That's sweet. Lots of Beatles. And we do, sometimes we'll do like a, like a jazzy kind of thing and then more kind of, sometimes we even do bluesy stuff. But when it comes to our personal music, like our original stuff. We write uh, indie folk. Really indie folk. And yeah. we're getting ready to record like a worship album too, like next month. So we're going from, it's going to be like an indie folk worship album. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys happen to have a, a web page or anything? that just follows you guys' music? Yep, we do. So if you go to arborseason.com, it uh, has links to all that stuff um, and also our, our touring schedules. You can see where the heck we're going to be throughout 
you know, 2021. As much as we know. As much as we know. So, guys, if you guys want to follow their music, head on over to their website. Listen to their music. I'm Like it. You know, follow them. Spotify. Spotify. Look mm. it up. But if you guys also want to see them live, look at their tour dates and see if they're going to be in your guys' hometown. Go see them. Go, you know, go hear them live. Listen to this man. There's not a lot of live music out there right now. True that. So it's cool to hear that you guys are still out there gigging. You know, yeah. Playing, playing music. We're yeah. doing like primarily house shows so that it's kind of like, you know, we're not like in a public place because not a lot of public places are doing that. Mm-hmm. But this way, like if people want to have a small social gathering, we can provide the music and facilitate that, which is awesome. So. When you guys do play in uh, so uh, like bar gigs and mm-hmm. whatnot, you guys don't have to play with masks on, do you? We no. haven't had anybody ask us to yet. No. But there is, there are some universities that require you to have a mask on while you're singing. But okay. we haven't yeah. done any of those yet, so. Yeah, Hopefully. that's gotta like mess with. The sound I don't know and if we would say yes to that. I would, for a college. Yeah, yeah. for absolutely. a college. Yeah, for a the bar. The money is so great, uh, but to, if we only make a couple hundred dollars at a bar, at a bar to play with your mask on for four hours, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> right? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, either. no. I would do Sweating it in a bar behind a mask. Yeah, like, just, it doesn't. Yeah, no sense. thanks. <laughs> no, I'm not about that. Not, not gonna do I that. I had to wear a mask while I was like nine months pregnant in florida that was enough <laughs> no thanks yep. in this yeah without ac right we had ac but like it's only that one unit back there mm-hmm. so basically i would like sit on the floor in front of it <laughs> so i could stay cool or go into walmart where the air conditioning flows uh-huh. <laughs> the doors open and you're like, just like oh. no. <laughs> yes yeah but it, it, it honestly that air conditioner gets it pretty chilly in here um but we're gonna get a mini split and it's gonna be a million times better he says it gets it chilly in here but only if it's already cold outside and it's not that's not true <laughs> if it's if we're talking like florida heat then it's not it's really not gonna you can't it. battle florida heat florida heat will always win we're about in florida where you guys Tampa. newport richie yeah <laughs> Tampa thing. sounds way cooler, especially if you know anything about Newport Richie. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's but, uh, where we'd park our bus, or, or maybe sometimes in Brooksville, but we were always gigging, like, in the Tampa area. Clearwater, Orlando. Disney. We played at Disney for four years, so. Yeah. What Did you guys do, like, um... You know, like the Cinderella gigs and all that no. kind of stuff at Disney? We were at Disney you... Springs, so like we played at Splitsville, which is the bowling alley. Mm-hmm. So we were contracted out, so we didn't even have to play any Disney songs. Mm-hmm. And so we literally, like the four years that we played there, never played a single Disney song. Oh, really? <laughs> and then we left and learned like five. <laughs> and now we add them into our set, which is really funny. Yeah. I was wondering that when I talked to your mom recently, she was mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, they worked at Disney. Are you sad? And I'm just thinking, like, you know, you guys being like Peter Peter Pan, just flying around. And <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Shane's Peter Pan. I'm Cinderella. <laughs> my, my guitar is flying around. This is where you guys hilarious. met. Hilarious. No, definitely not. No. It'd be fun to do like one time. <laughs> Have you ever, I remember this one time. I'm, I'm going to say this because a train's going by, but we slept beside a train track just like this. <laughs> this is what we heard all night long. Except the horn. So you guys mentioned something about staying at like Harvest Hosts. Mm-hmm. Can you guys explain to the the fans or the watchers, you know, what exactly Harvest Hosts is, the experience of being there? Yeah. So Harvest Hosts is amazing because there's the app is super user user friendly, and no, we're not sponsored by them, um, <laughs> but it's so great. There's like 1,500 or so different places: farms, wineries, churches, breweries, golf courses, everything. Yeah, alpaca farms. So you pay like 70 bucks or something a year for this, and uh, you just stay there for free. And it's it's like common courtesy, and you're supposed to buy something when you go there. But you want um, to because, like, yeah. I mean, a lot of them are breweries, distilleries, and stuff. So like. You can go, like, have a wine tasting or, like, I don't know, get some cheese. We bought cheese at one of the wineries <laughs> yeah. one time. Or if you stay at some wineries, they teach you how to make wine. Like, they, you can actually go and, like, they take the, you can pick them and, and they show you how mm-hmm. to do it. We haven't done that yet. I would love to do those kind of. How there smart is- for them, though, because they bring you in, they teach you how to do it, but they're also getting free labor. <laughs> right. very smart very smart i was talking to someone yesterday um the girl from wabi sabi bus victoria she said that they just stayed at one where it was like part of it was a bee farm 
right? Mm -hmm. And then the other part is a meadery. So, like, they would take the honey from the bee farm to make mead at this place, which is, like, super cool. But we've really loved our experience. We just started doing Harvest Host, like, this year. And it's been life-changing because when you're looking for, like, a free place to park, you know, free place to park, you don't want to pay for an RV park, but you want to park somewhere pretty. You don't necessarily want to be in a Walmart parking lot or a Cracker Barrel, Mm -hmm. which is fine in its time. But, like they're always in these gorgeous settings so like we can just like let our son run around Mm -hmm. kick his soccer ball and it's just like relaxing you get to meet people you know try like get a little taste of the culture from the area and like people leave reviews about them so like we stayed at one where we were literally parked right next to a train track and trains were going by all night (laughs) and I didn't read the reviews to know that which was my fault but now that I know that I'm like okay I'm always gonna check to see that because I was literally up all night but it was such a cool place I kind of didn't mind, so. So read the reviews, guys. Read, read those reviews. reviews. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a heavy sleeper, go anyways. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've heard of people complain about it because they, you know, they have to pay the yearly fees and this and that, and then go and, it, you know, not expected to buy things, but at the same time, if you think about it, you go and stay somewhere else. You go to lunch. You mm-hmm. go buy a drink. You know, wherever you are, a lot of times you guys stay in the cities. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's the same concept, you know, either you support a local business in town or you support a local winery of buying maybe a $15, $20 bottle of wine or some cheese or whatever it is. And And sometimes the tastings are only like $5 to do like a tasting thing. And it's really up to you how much money you spend. Because some people are like, oh, we end up spending more money at Harvest Host than at an RV park. And I'm like, well, maybe you have a drinking problem. (laughs) (laughs) But like, I mean, when we go, we never spend very much money. But like, we feel great about the fact that we can support a local business. And Mm -hmm. it's way less than staying at an RV park. And when Mm -hmm. you're self-contained... It's like you don't need to plug in. You don't need all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just a really cool experience. Yeah, especially if you are um, able to be unplugged. Like, yeah, you, you know, you live it. off of solar, you have a composting toilet or all that stuff. Like, you don't have to worry about plugging in or dumping or anything. So for those people, Harvest Host is just it's so fantastic. I love it. I, I want to go to an alpaca farm. There was one in Dallas, but we didn't make it. And I was really sad because that would be so fun. <laughs> I want to see that one. I, want I know. To see what you, what they experience at an alpaca farm when you go. Stay they had there. like uh, they like, said they had a huge gift shop. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. Is it a petting zoo? Is it? Like, you can go see about them? them. You get to pet them, and they had like a whole store with like stuff made from like alpaca and like that stuff mm-hmm. is like oh man, I would love to go. One of these days, I'll make it. So you guys are talking about being self-contained. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about your guys' bus, like make model year what you guys did to it to convert it yeah so it's a 91 bluebird uh with a 5.9 cummins engine and uh we honestly i went with the school bus route because i wanted to be off grid so we got 540 watts in two lithium batteries 100 amp batteries um and we did the agm batteries but it did not work well for they us they froze and then melted it was awful, uh-huh. and and you just you know once you go below fifty percent, was that because it was them? temperature or high elevation? Temperature. Herbal? It was cold. It was like the first night below freezing that we stayed in, and like woke up in the middle of the night to our batteries and our inverter smoking. It was That's it was crazy. Was yeah. So. But yeah, since we moved to lithium, it's been so great. Amazing. So the composting toilet has been awesome. Oh we my went, gosh. Yeah, we went with the nature's head, which was really expensive but super worth it. So we dumped that like once a month or whatever. And uh, the liquids we dump a lot more often, but Mm -hmm. it's so much easier. Like when we we did the RV for four and a half years and constantly having to find a place to go legally dump your black water Mm -hmm. tank. Yeah, it's a pain. Whereas with the composting toilet, you don't need to do that. Right. It's way easier. And with how many people Mm -hmm. you guys have utilizing this bus, you know, you guys have three adults and it, well the toddler doesn't use the toilet yet yeah yeah we're, we're working on it listen i have no idea how to potty train a two and a half did you put the kid on the toilet google it. Google no it, no yeah. that's, that's what she's saying i should do i'm oh, like yeah. google it i told him it's his job and he's like i don't know how to do it i'm like neither do i google it no one knows because he doesn't tell you like he doesn't know how to say i'm about to poop yeah. or i'm about to pee that's no, so they don't have to do that i i don't know google it yeah, well, I have an article I'm gonna send we'll to you. Uh oh. <laughs> right. You send me you send me an article and then I'll All read right. it. But yeah, so two uh, three adults pretty much using this thing. Um, so we're dumping the pee bucket almost daily. Mm-hmm. So that's the only downside. But I don't know for some reason those things just don't bother me. And you I'm can just, just dump mm-hmm, it in yeah. anyone's toilet. 
like mm -hmm. and I love the fact areas. that like oh my gosh you know this is our home we just you know I don't I just got some kind of like pride ownership thing about it that for me I've never had an issue dumping even when we had a black water tank it's just it is what it is yeah dealing with our poop he just I just loves love it. it I just loves it. put my fingers in <laughs> even, <laughs> even though I'm in an RV now like I don't even I don't pee in our toilet I you use, don't no I use a pee jug and I empty it out daily interesting why it's is just, that it's just because it's just that less of usage you know yeah, yeah people are going to be like what 12 ounces a day or something like that or 24 ounces a day but still every single day for a week you know let's say you dump 24 ounces it's like you know that adds up so and if then I, you, you can save your black water tank right if yeah. you can save space from anywhere you know do it right <clears throat> so I, yeah i just pee in a bottle all day long <laughs> Go down. Well, I'm so used to it. I lived yeah. in a van, and then I lived in a box truck, and yeah. now I'm staying in an RV. So it, it wasn't anything different. Yeah. yeah. It was just saving space. Absolutely. So I respect I dig it. it. I dig it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about your guys' bus, the conversion, and, you know, the uh, water tank sizes, what yeah. you guys did. Yeah, we're going to upgrade our water tank because it's 42 gallons. 48, 48 gallons. Yeah. But we definitely, like, we find that we need to get water more often than we'd like to and we have the space under our couch for a bigger one so we're going to eventually upgrade to a 100 gallon one um but i mean gosh we built this thing out i say we i didn't actually build anything <laughs> i like painted everything and made shane rebuild stuff after he built it <laughs> yep <laughs> a lot. i would spend like hours on the project I and then she so would bad. come in and she'd be like Ugh. I did not do Dude, that. Dude, this is awful. <laughs> that is not and then true. I'd be like, <laughs> that is not true. Walk outside and try that again. So my mom actually helped me do a lot of the build. She came up and and uh, this was actually her idea to have this. Unfortunately, we didn't really think about that, but there you have it. And we always put water whenever we're traveling in it, so it doesn't smell. I know that it doesn't always do that, but sometimes it smells. So now that we're parked somewhere. We can actually un unplug these, but yeah, we wash our dishes in here, we dry them in here, and then we're done. We can either put this on one side or the other, or flip them down. So, it covers the whole thing, you have all the extra counter space, which is our favorite thing. So this is our couch, underneath it is a 48 gallon water tank that goes to all of our sinks and our shower, and then we pull this out for extra seating, and then we put some storage in here, like canned foods, and over here are our games. But again, we can all put these back, and then everybody can kind of hang out a little bit extra. It gets here. real cozy real quick. <laughs> yep. So this is our kitchen table. We used to have a coffee bar here. Realized we didn't really use it uh, to the best of its ability. So my friend that we were parking at his house had all this extra wood because he was building his house. So I just took extra wood, built this here, had one uh, one strip here, one strip on the bottom, and that's what's holding this thing in place. And it's surprisingly pretty sturdy. And that chair is from an antique store, and this one is from that friend's house. <laughs> yep. DIY. DIY yeah. at its best. Best Slash way stealing. to do it. Yes. Now we're going to check out. This is kind of like the sleeping area. So this is where our nanny sleeps. Since we play music full time, um, when we do our shows, we need somebody to kind of like watch our children for us because they're still pretty small. So this is like her personal area with all of her pictures and cute stuff. Um, we have these like Christmas lights up here for ambiance. All of her cute little pictures of her buddies. I love it. Sometimes I just come in here and look at them and I'm like, who's that? <laughs> So this one is being used for storage currently because we're working out some storage solutions, but eventually when we decide to really put in the work, our son will sleep here instead of in our bed with us, but right now he's with us. So eventually, um, this is kind of like the kids storage area and we're actually going to turn this giant toy chest into a dresser for clothes with like drawers. And then we're going to put a cabinet door here have a drawer here and if this is going to be like where the kids have their toys and their clothes whereas up here is like where our nanny keeps all of her stuff and we have like towels and miscellaneous items she has some vintage roller skates back there it's pretty cool <laughs> so this is like more storage this is currently where we keep our little girls clothes and then this is just like baby diaper station we keep all of her blankets up here which surprisingly they stay like the whole time we drive which is really nice and then inside is the closet and i have these nifty these are like 
one of my favorite purchases because they just like collapse so you can like keep more stuff in your closet. And this is a closet organizer by Artos that we really like. And this is where we keep like socks and shoes and things for the kiddos. I love that thing. Artos. <laughs> so our shower slash bathtub. Um, I've decided that it was really important to have a bathtub since we have little kids. It's just easier to give them baths than showers. And this was a $30 galvanized steel tub from Tractor Supply Company. We had to like hammer it down in the center so that it would drain properly, but then they just put a drain in. We spray painted it and turned it into a bathtub. <laughs> and then we have like this nifty like shower thingy and this is just peel and stick tile from Walmart because I was not about to take the time to do real tile because I don't know anything about that. <laughs> So oh, this is our bedroom. Um, it's like wall to wall bed, which was my request. We literally got a king size mattress and turned it sideways so it would be wider. And we've got like one TV, we've got our air conditioner unit back here, but we're going to upgrade to a mini split this summer, which is really exciting. We also just got this new bedding off of Amazon for $30, what? Um, and then these cabinets are where we keep our clothes, but we're actually going to change that soon too. We're gonna to turn our closet into a big dresser, so you'll have to stay tuned to see up that. Up there is where the mini split is gonna go. Uh, we already have like a thing welded and mounted up there for the fan, um, but right now we're just using it for storage. We're bad at being minimalist because we have to store a lot of things. <laughs> That's not true. Um, I would come in and I... I and then she'd walk outside, you'd fix it, and then she'd come back in and be like, okay, good, it's so great. She'd be like, oh, you're almost there. Now you, <laughs> you know... It was hard because, like, so our son was only a year and a half old, and so, like, that age, I don't know, he just needed, like, a lot of attention, and we were at my sister's house, and I'm, like, living in her house, so I can't just, like, leave him in there. And then there's all the power tools in the bus, so I can't just come out mm -hmm. in the bus with him. And so Shane would be, like, spending all day building something, and then I would come out and I'd be like it's really great but like you have to change it <laughs> like our bathroom door originally was going to <laughs> this she's putting you on blast but yeah and she I is. was pregnant yeah. I was pregnant and the door was this big I was like no. Can't fit. Dude, my mom would be way. helping me with a lot of the build too which was super funny <laughs> because like Emily would come in with like her suggestions and my mom would be like do you know what we just did? But I understand, you it know, having so to fix hard. things. But I, yeah, I understand it because we, you know, like we're going to be living, the fixing it in one day is better than living with it for years. Oh, definitely. You know, so it was worth it. And but it's hard to see it. Like, I totally get it. And I felt so bad every time I had to ask <laughs> you guys to rebuild something because I know how hard you worked on it. But it was like in three yeah. months that it was like livable. And I have pictures too from like when we hit the road on July 4th. Everything was plywood, mm -hmm. but it was livable. Like, and that was why we were able to hit the road. But yeah. it took, I tell people it took three months to build it and about six months to make it cute. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate. And we're still making we're, it cute. Yeah, every day um, we're adding something new. Like these, these, uh, these, uh, what these is cushion this? covers. We just mm -hmm. did this. Our nanny. Are these velvet or are these? It's like a faux suede. I got okay. this fabric for super cheap, but we got these cushions. They were like repurposed from an old RV, and they just like the cushion covers were nasty and like old. And so our nanny slash friend Marie, she like sews and stuff, and so she like made these, which was so nice. And they're all clean and now we try to bring people in the road that are good at things mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah. if you don't well, have any skills you can't come out everybody of has their strengths somewhere it's just that they can find what that strength is yep. that's right she has very many uh, my strength is determination i won't say because if you look around our bus like if you look at everything you're like okay it looks you can definitely tell a professional carpenter did not build this bus um, no, but, but you like, can tell that you put your character into it. Yeah. And it got done. And that's the thing, because for me, I'm not as much like that. And if I had done this project by myself, I would not have finished it. He just like has this drive and determination. Some days it was like, I don't know how this is going to get finished. And he would be so beside himself with like the plumbing. Like, why is this leaking over here? Why is this <laughs> happening? And he like pushed through and it's crazy because like, the electric he did himself and we had it inspected by electricians and it's like safe and i'm like he's not an electrician <laughs> <laughs> you know but i had an experienced uh, electrician walk me through facetime had to oh, do yeah. it all and we've had it inspected so. like three times and i'm like i'm just so impressed i think it's amazing like we're using this and it's a home and he had never built 
anything. But Did you guys supposed- have like a reason to get it inspected? I've never heard of anybody really getting. We no. just knew people that were yeah. electricians. And we were like, hey, you want to take a look? And they're yeah. like, sure. Yeah. We're just curious. We want to make sure it's safe because we have kids in here. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, if there is an obvious danger of there being like some kind of electrical fire in the middle of the night, we would like to know. Yeah. So, so we actually had two different electricians look at it. One electrician that actually helped me do it. And then we had an uh, electrical engineer <laughs> on my bus saying that it was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Mike from Navigation Nowhere. His dad nice. is like an engineer. So like he was a, you know, so we, there's a lot that went into making sure that it was legal uh the propane i never touched i didn't want to do anything do that yeah the diesel heater we didn't touch um i think those are the only two things that we didn't touch yeah if i'm I'm correct definitely the light switches were really um not the light switches themselves but the the lights were a little difficult to wire correctly that but you did it and they work yes it was was and they're so cute i love these and it's funny i would have to relearn how to do it super nice i like them amazon (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. I don't like are you guys running a full 12 volt system or are you guys running 110 or 110 unfortunately uh, there's only a few things that are, I mean everything goes to our batteries obviously but uh, I wired it 110 mm-hmm. or 120 I think 110 is Canada I don't know but anyway yeah we wired it that wired that way because the electrician that was helping me do it um, was an electrician for homes and we didn't really have the knowledge of you know doing everything 12 volt which mm. would have saved a lot of power and usage um but like especially once we get two more lithium batteries it's like that's really not a concern it's not a concern yeah. at all so our water pump and our diesel heater are straight wired mm-hmm. uh 12 volt which is fantastic because those are the things that are constantly running we always need those to work i mean if the fridge dies it would suck but we can work with it. But with, it the, with the diesel heater, did you guys tap into the tank? We did. Nice. But we yeah. didn't do it. We had a professional. Yeah, do we had it. a professional do it. But that's that cool. is the number one way to go. Is if you have diesel rig, tap that diesel heater yeah. into it's it. It's fantastic. It doesn't use barely anything. And it go. keeps this place toasty. I had yeah. to turn it down last night. I woke up in the middle mm-hmm. of the night. I was like, it's hot in here, and this is a big bus, and we have one heater. Yeah. It was awesome. I didn't know though. Uh, Wabi Sabi bus has. Um, and this is the great thing about the bus life. Everybody helps each other out, but she has a she says connections that would extend it and have a tube that goes this way and this way. Yeah, yeah I've been. I told you I wanted to get one of those because I'm yeah. like, look at this tube. You can just like put another connector and have it go wherever you want. Yep. So, so awesome. I wish I still had those parts because I had one. Aww. When I hooked up my diesel heater, I had one and I was like, I'm never going to use this. <laughs> <laughs> so I left it at the property that Aww. I was staying in, in That's uh, right. Oregon. That's like yeah. a cheap But thing. if you guys are ever in Oregon, and the parts might be there still. <laughs> hey, just go we're going to La Grande, Oregon in, in like a couple of weeks, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, Eastern yeah. Oregon. Eastern love it. For <laughs> pleasure or a gig or both? Both, both. Yeah. yeah. We love it there. We've got some friends and... Yeah, our friend just gave a little plug because why not? There you go. Uh, but she's the Grand at, Landing Hotel. Yeah, the Landing Hotel, and she's so sweet. Karen's the one that runs it, and yeah, Karen. we just every time that we're in the area, we just go hang out with her, and we're gonna play some music there. And cool. Her hotel. Yeah. Did you guys meet her just by staying there? Or? Yeah, I had to. The first time we went, um, usually Emily and me, we do everything musically together. Mm-hmm. But she's pregnant for Sawyer, and so uh, I flew to um, Lagrange, Oregon, to play at the university there. What is it? East Oregon? Eastern University? Oregon University, yeah. yeah. So I played there and stayed in her hotel. Um, you was... got sick. Weren't you sick? I don't think so. You were. You were. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, you were. You just don't remember. I don't you remember. were so sick that you don't remember. I just don't remember. <laughs> but she was so sweet, and then we found, like, she found out that we were Christians, and we found out she was Christians, and then we just bonded over that. And then we just started talking, hanging out, and then, yeah, we, we talked almost monthly uh via instagram and yeah and then i got to meet her a couple months later after we had sawyer and it's yeah but her place is like a staple like if you're going through eastern oregon like uh, a lot of really famous photographers will stay there it's like a tourist attraction but it's just beautiful i love it i have to swing through and say hi she has great coffee (laughs) yes good iced mocha really (laughs) that's like the only way i really like coffee is iced every once in a while i'll have a hot cup but and again, I'm not even a coffee drinker. It's you know, it's funny because if someone else is making a cup, I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take one. It's like a but comfort thing. Like I a fun, don't really yeah. drink it. It's like it's almost like a snack. It's like, oh yeah, sure. Especially yeah, the breakfast. cold coffee is like. Yeah, it's just like a, it's just a sweet treat. drink and a you know. I love it. Iced coffee in the afternoon, hot coffee in the morning for me. I drink a lot of caffeine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you do. So where exactly did you guys meet? 
Let's tell everybody a little bit yeah. about your guys' backstory. Insomniacs. <laughs> we met at this in a dream. You know, we met at this awful, nasty, nasty bar in Florida. In Florida, at an open mic night. That's like the only redeeming quality is that it was an open mic night. So it's not like we were both just hanging out at this nasty bar. We're like, oh, music, let's go. And yeah. so I had a friend that was like, oh, you need to meet this girl. And so I was like, okay. So we went, and then yeah, we were friends for three years. First, friends <sighs> is a relative term. Yeah, friends that like each other, but it was complicated. It was a complicated, dramatic, dumb relationship. Yeah. There should be a TV show about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was complicated, and then we, then after three years, we, we decided dating. to cut the crap, and we were like, all right, let's do this for real. Started dating, got engaged like a year later, and then married a few months after that. So that was. Once you, you guys believe... pull the trigger, you guys just go for it, huh? Definitely. Yep. <laughs> so that's how we do and it's, things. We fight way less now than <laughs> less. Like, since we've gotten married, we don't fight as much as we did before we were married, which is... Funny, hilarious. usually it's, or what I hear, it's the opposite. That is yes. usually the case. We got it all out at the beginning. We're like, this... Well, yeah. we, like, owned a business together. We gigged together four hours a day, every single day. He was living in the guest room at my parents' apartment for, like, a year. Oh! Sorry. So <laughs> put my dad in the guest room. Yeah! Oh, what's the matter? Don't be so sad. I just need to calm her down for a second, sorry. Okay. Alright, we're good. Life. Right? Parent life. There's something so magical about having your kids with you when you're traveling, even mm -hmm. though in some ways it is harder, obviously, mm -hmm. than not having kids. <laughs> I bet. I but can't imagine. Better. I don't have any kids. My kid is a four-legged dog, and it's, <laughs> yeah. that's hard enough to take care of. Dogs you know? are like kids that never dogs, grow up. Dogs are, I think, harder than kids sometimes. Like, I don't know. I won't say harder. Just, it's very different. Well, you get to send your kid away eventually. The dog, I have to take care of the rest of it. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I that's always true. think, too. And also, kids are easier to fly with than dogs. But then again... I can lock up a dog for eight hours, not get in trouble for it. If I stick a kid in a cage for eight hours, probably don't. And you got do people that. knocking on your door, and it's yeah. like, "What's well, my kid?" Right. right. Yeah. So Here, you want to take care of him? Yeah. It's <laughs> all oh, good times. Every time I hear a diesel like engine now, I'm like looking. I'm like, "Oh, is there a schoolie is that around a friend? here?" Yeah, is that a friend? No, it's just the local local mm -hmm. bus. The yep. city bus. We saw a random schoolie yesterday driving by. You I saw, did. I was going to say, it I had a roof it. raise and everything, Isn't but they didn't have their name on it. you get in certain areas that you like see more schoolies. Out west. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, way well, out we pulled, here in Flagstaff is, um, I've never seen so many converted Or even vans. vans oh, or, I never so would have noticed many. them until I lived this lifestyle. Now I see them everywhere. I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, there's a solar panel on that, va uh, on that van. There's We're also so it. much more now than there ever was before. Like the amount of people that are doing this, like there's just so many more resources for people that want to live a nomadic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Whereas like even five years ago, there wouldn't have been this many, like you would see like VW vans and stuff, people that are doing like really rustic camping, but you would not see that many like Mercedes, like yeah. <laughs> sprinters and no. all that stuff. There's and so all many the now. new companies that have come out because of this lifestyle it's crazy. and all the new podcasts that have come out for this lifestyle. <laughs> and it's a whole But thing. we can't do it without each other. No, absolutely. You I know, love like, the community. If you guys wouldn't allow me to come in and tell your story, or you guys tell your story on the podcast, it's like, you know, you, I wouldn't have an income. I wouldn't have a job. I wouldn't have anything to do. We got yeah. you, John. Thanks, we got guys. You. Yes, we're, we're and if it weren't for, for people like you, like making videos of our bus and doing interviews and stuff, I mean, that's part of what gets our name out there, too. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. I know there's a sore or a sour taste in some people's mouths of the whole social media and putting this life out there. And they're like, I don't want more people out into this life. But then again, it's so beautiful. It's like, why not? I don't love you want it. to share it with? I want I more love the community. Yeah, I want more opportunities to meet up with all my friends all over the country. You know, one thing I try, I've tried to explain, and I hope that people kind of understand this. But is, if there was more people living on the road, there would be less land being used, I and mean, there would be more places for us to actually explore. That's a really yeah. good point. That is a good point. And then also, like, you have like what Shane was saying, more opportunities to like meet up with your friends all over the country. And for us, mm -hmm. like. I would say in our top three reasons for why we love bus life so much is like the community and how quick 
we made friends with other bus people Mm -hmm. that we like get to caravan around with and it just like it takes the experience to the next level like yeah we would have had a great time camping like south of the grand canyon if it was just us yeah but we had two other buses and their families with us and there was something so magical about sitting around the campfire all of us together just Mm -hmm. like sharing stories and hanging out and it's like it's it's like camp for grown-ups even when you don't know them and so like you pull into this parking lot you see another schoolie you're instantly i know it's like you've known each other for years yep hey what's going on man what are you doing yes let me see your rig let me see yeah it's an instant connection which is so great we've had people say like oh i saw a school bus and i wanted to see inside but i didn't want to bother them and i'm like i can just about guarantee you you can read it though like if somebody's rig is closed up yeah. You know, and and it looks like it's real quiet and whatnot. Don't go knocking on their rig. Yeah. But if they got their windows open and their doors open yeah. and, and, you know, Schooly everything's... people, we're used to giving random tours to strangers. Gas station tours. We've given so many gas station mm-hmm. tours. Walmart. I'm sure you guys do more tours than vanners or box life people. Oh, yeah, because we stick out like a sore thumb. People automatically know what we are. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, I tell people, I'm like, if you're an introvert don't get a schoolie because right. people constantly want to talk to you about it take yeah. pictures of it like see inside your bus like everywhere you go and when well, we just were for an RV, example a few minutes ago there was a guy out there taking pictures of the names that are on the side always of your bus. Yep. <laughs> always i'm surprised yeah. he didn't come in and ask if he could see inside because that happens so much all the time you guys explain a little bit about those names I know you guys kind of told me about it so we had we were just about to hit the road and we found out we needed all new tires Actually, I think we knew that from the beginning, but we were kind of like, oh man, we don't want to do it. And it's a lot of money, uh, $2,300. So we're like, you know what? Let's do a live stream on Facebook. And so we did that. Uh, was it on your birthday? It was on my birthday. And so the thing was like, whoever contributed to our fund for getting new tires got to have their name put on the side of the bus because in order for us to leave, we needed the new tires. So mm-hmm. that was kind of like the last thing of like, if we're going to hit the road when we need to, this has to happen and so we need people's help because we weren't doing gigs because it was COVID and everything was closed Mm -hmm. and that's how we make our money so we did that live stream and all of those names are people that like sent us money to help get our tires and we got them and we hit the road and it was awesome (laughs) it's a great example of how tight-knit this community is absolutely yeah you know I was out at um and I don't believe you guys were there, but Schooly Palooza. No, we didn't get to go. So I was out there, and there was a girl that needed tires. She lived in a bus, and she's like, "How am I going to do this?" And she plays the piano, so she has a baby grand in, in her bus. What? Yeah. That's dope. And I want to see that. So me and four other guys grabbed it and pulled it out of her bus. She put a, a hat out and started playing. And by the end of Schooly Palooza, she raised all of her money for new tires. That's the coolest thing ever. And then, of course, we had to load this damn thing back up (laughs) in here. (laughs) Worth it. But that's so awesome. That's so funny. And they say, like, when you go to, like, Van Fest or any, like, tiny house um, meetups or whatever, like, you bring the materials and, like, if somebody knows how to do it, Mm -hmm. they'll just do it for you. And I love that because I don't know if I've ever been a part of another community that was like that. Except for, like, when you have a really tight-knit church. We've had a couple like that, which was great. But, like, this is just, like, awesome to be a nomad on the road, but know that you have people out there. And the church, you at least, like, you build a repertoire and you know them. And a lot of churches will just help you no matter what anyway. But it's so rare to find a community of people that are like, I've never even met you before. But I'll help you. I'm willing to do anything it takes to help you in your situation. This is a great example, but last night we were just talking about church community and nomad community Mm -hmm. and my friend Rady was like I go to church on Sundays everybody says hi how you doing everybody goes great you know thanks for asking and then they go on their way feels like a tight-knit community but nobody goes to lunch with each other nobody meets up and you know goes and hangs out in their same house and this and that but in this community you meet up with somebody just one time in a parking lot and because you both have schoolies you guys are instant friends for the rest of your life yeah. which is funny because like there are a lot of churches like that but the ones that we've always gone to are the ones where people do go out for lunch so it does exist but okay. like i like how in the schooly community it's so widespread yeah it's like automatic so i feel like in a lot of churches you're searching it for that kind of community in yeah. the church but with the schooly community it's just, it's just like you just it's know it there. yeah oh we got a sad baby it's it is nap time. Yeah. yeah. It's not. Oh, the two buses will be here in about 15 minutes. Okay. Cool. So hopefully you're still there so you can hang and see them and yeah. 
they're if, they're really fun. If anybody wants to do an interview or a small tour, I haven't actually done just just a tour. So if anybody wants to just do a tour, that would be cool too. Yeah, we should ask awesome. them. They're just they're gonna be here, just yeah. hanging out. Her bus is really fun because she's got like a farm in her bus. She's got two dogs, two, <laughs> two cats, cats, a and bunch four of kittens, kittens, a lizard. A lizard. She's got tarantulas. Oh, man, she really was an awesome. ex. Uh, she's an ex uh, marine. So like, <laughs> not an ex marine. She's a marine. Vet. Which bus? A is marine this? vet. Sorry, I, I'm. I don't You're know anything. You're never an ex marine. <laughs> <laughs> You're never an ex marine. Probably yeah. What in what bus? Which one? Painted was that? buffalo. Painted buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. So and Wabi Sabi bus is coming, and oh my gosh, they're just such that that family is just super special. Oh, they're so, so great. Sweet. We all went to the Grand Canyon together the other day. It yeah. was so fun. And where all three of our buses are driving down the highway, and mm -hmm. they're like, what? Everybody's just like, like stopping and looking. They're like know, taking right? pictures. It was so fun. Like, why is there five? buses all painted different <laughs> colors where are these guys going when we pull into yeah. a cracker barrel everybody has like a mini heart attack they're like oh my gosh how many people are coming into our restaurant there's yeah. only like six of us mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. funny it's really cool that the uh that the schoolie community though has made its full circle like back in the hippie days, everybody was, yeah. would drive around in buses together and go to gigs or go to events or yeah. go whatever and then it, you know, it kind of dispersed, and there were some people out there doing it, but definitely not like it is now. No, definitely not. And we've brought it to, like, a whole new level, too. It's, like, it's totally different. It's almost like, because back then I feel like it was more, um, what's the word, like, roughing it, maybe, back yeah. then? Maybe? More rustic. More rustic, where now it's, like, you're getting these, It's like, almost like luxury Ikea living. Look, yeah. Some of the people that do it, I'm like, y'all are living in a nicer bus than any apartment or house that I've ever lived in. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, our friends just another schoolie. I've never seen anything what? like it. It literally like, looks like a display in, like, an Ikea or something. It's so yeah, beautiful. It's perfect. So I think this is a great time, usually in the podcast, I'll ask the guest, is to give out... To the watchers some information if they want to come out into this life you know some suggestions of what to do is what not to do is what to expect when you get out into this community yeah it's going to be a million times harder than you think it's going to be no matter how hard you think it's going to be and i would give the complete opposite advice like it's, <laughs> it's, it's marriage a, it's a million times easier than i ever thought it would have been like for me it's it's been an easy fun the thing I, I to me there's no downsides i will say when you were building it that's not what you were saying oh you're talking about the building process yes living it in can it, be I'm any of it anything that. any of it that's in he's the, talking yeah. about getting started in it so if you're gonna build a schoolie that's yeah. the part that's gonna be harder than you ever thought oh yeah being definitely. on the road <laughs> and traveling is gonna be more rewarding than you ever thought it was going yeah. to be when you pull into those beautiful spots oh yeah it's, it's just like you're you know, like yeah this is some what it's of us for. you know we have to park in what I call blacktop park or blacktop camping every once in a while. We do that. I mean, we yep. definitely do, but it's all worth it when you. It's only get... a night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On to the next place. Yeah, but there's that, and you have to be determined. I mean, like. Oh, there they are. They're here. There's Jess. There's Jess. Painted hey. buffalo. Woo -hoo -hoo. Maybe if we're lucky, guys, we'll get a little interview with them. That would be awesome. Right. And there's Wabi Sabi Bus. Yep. There they are. Oh, I guess there's no, no more. Was there no in. more RV parking? It looks like. Uh oh. They're like, we're just gonna take it over. Well, this is where they're supposed to park for the RV parking, but maybe the spot. Yeah, there's some stuff over there, like all in the other parking lot that they can go into. Mm -hmm. So they'll figure it out. They're smart. They're, yeah. They do this all the time. She'll right. She'll call me and she's like, help. So I've seen during the interview that you've been drinking out of this child fun cup over here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about? that uh, fun for us so we just started working with a company called child fund about a year ago and at all of our shows we um, place a bunch of kid packets on our merch table and people can look at them they're from all over the world and the way child fund uh, works that we really really love is they um, take certain villages and sponsor um, everyone in the village and then they move on to the next village and they do the same thing at that village and then they move on to the next village and so that's I thought was a really cool unique so they're actually changing the culture of everywhere they go and so we love them um, they're just such great people and yeah we love them all right guys so that concludes another episode of nomad happy hour 
I want to thank Shane and Emily for stopping by and giving us their story about where they came from, how they started on the road, and where their journeys are taking them. Also, is if you guys want to listen to some of their up-and-coming new music that's coming out, head on over to Spotify and check them out. Also, if you guys are looking for new Nomad Happy Hour merchandise, head over to teesprings.com. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Nomad Happy Hour. Without you guys, Nomad Happy Hour would not be available. Keep the rubber side down. Nomad's out.